Australia has some of the brightest, boldest, and most alarming creepy crawlies on the planet. In their miniature world, nothing is quite what it seems. Spiders look like ants. Insects move like leaves. They transform themselves for almost every purpose. From master builder to assassin. Some work together, others alone. Each one is part of the great struggle for life. In this vast, ancient continent. Home to some of the planet's most unusual and fascinating animals. These are the secret lives of Australia's bugs and butterflies. The wet tropics of Queensland, in the far northeast of Australia. Rainforest dominates here. To the human eye, there may be nothing to see but green. But from the canopy to the forest floor, every centimetre of this fecund ecosystem is packed with creatures. Some are large and easily visible. But there's another, more hidden world here. A small one. Filled with life that's complex, rich, and utterly ruthless. A world of insects and spiders. Nowhere else in Australia has such a high diversity of bugs as here, in Queensland's wet tropics. This is a brutal eat or be eaten environment. And they've developed strategies to survive. There are 400 species of butterfly in Australia. For 60% of them, the tropics of Queensland are home. Some are breathtaking. The red lacewing. Australia's only bright red butterfly. And one of the few predominantly red butterflies in the world. The colours of the Cairns birdwing, endemic to Australia, are even more spectacular. At around 16 centimetres across, this many-hued giant is the largest butterfly in Australia. From the bright orange cruiser to the patterned 
common egg fly. Each butterfly adds its own dash of colour. They bring incredible vibrancy to the forest. The dazzling shades and designs of their markings are extraordinary. But only for the briefest of times. Most butterflies live for no more than four to six weeks. Their wings are unable to heal from any kind of damage. Each beat takes its toll. The faster the insect flies, the more damage its wings suffer. And the shorter its life. Egg laying is where it all begins. These miniature orbs are well camouflaged. Each butterfly lays hundreds over the course of its short life. Here, a red lacewing lays her eggs on the stem of a leaf. She's not the first to use this nursery. Like a shoal of fish or a flock of birds, the red lacewing seeks safety in numbers by laying in groups. For these eggs of the Cairns birdwing, the time has come to hatch. It's been eight days since this egg was laid. The tiny caterpillar has another seven to nine weeks to go before it becomes a butterfly. As it feeds, it'll grow rapidly and shed its skin at least four times. Caterpillars grow in stages. As they get too big for their skin, they molt it off and replace it with one that's a little more spacious. These transformations require a lot of energy. And that means a lot of food. This caterpillar lets nothing go to waste, including its old skin. It's not really known why caterpillars eat the skin they've shed. It might be for extra nutrition, or it might be to remove all evidence of their presence, so predators have no reason to come and take a closer look.
in the forest, nothing is safe. Each individual is in perpetual danger. They must be on constant guard. This tiny caterpillar strays right into the jaws of a ferocious weaver ant. Another ant arrives to try and wrestle the prize away. The caterpillar is caught in a tug of war. Escape is impossible. All caterpillars must protect themselves as best they can. They evade, they fight, and they poison in their struggle to survive. The caterpillar of the common egg fly is armed with enough sharp spines to deter most birds. The caterpillar of the cruiser is a bit of a bruiser. It has the longest spines of any butterfly larva. Its body is also highly toxic. This caterpillar spends its short life feeding on poisonous vines. The vines do no harm to the larva itself, but they make its body noxious to any predator. Bright warning colours, known as aposematic coloration, aim to deter attack. They let predators know these caterpillars are toxic. The caterpillar of the Cairns birdwing is an even more dangerous target. It too eats leaves full of toxins, so its prickly body becomes poisonous to predators as well. But it also has a secret weapon. From its noxious food, it creates a foul-tasting chemical. When threatened, it can fire out this vile liquid from the horns in its head. Which just might be enough to discourage an attacker. Two weeks have passed, and it's time for the caterpillar of the cruiser butterfly to move into the next stage of its life. It must become a chrysalis. The cruiser caterpillar has moved away from the plant it's been feeding on to one that provides plenty of leaves and, importantly, cover. Having prepared a pad of silk on the host leaf, it now anchors on with a clump of special hooks known as the cremister. Under its skin, the chrysalis forms. It'll remain a chrysalis for between seven and 12 days. A long time to be a sitting target.
but its leaf-like shape blends in with the foliage. The caterpillar of the Cairns birdwing has a different technique. It too creates a pad of silk to anchor it to the stem. But it then spins itself a thin thread that functions as a girdle. Shedding the last of its caterpillar skins, it transforms into a chrysalis. Over three to four weeks, its cells gradually become liquid and reorganize themselves into a new structure. The final metamorphosis is beginning. Down on the forest floor, Life continues. Millipedes look for food. They feast on decaying vegetation and perform a vital role in the ecosystem by breaking down dead plant material. At the waterside, frogs abound. They lay their eggs in the calmest water they can find. This aptly named giant frog lays around a thousand eggs at a time. The tadpoles and young frogs become food for other species. In the air, dragonflies dart. They can fly faster than almost any other insect and reach speeds of 58 kilometers an hour. But even their agility and swiftness may not be enough to protect them from the archer fish. It favors mangrove estuaries but ventures upriver. Its powerful water jets can hit an insect around two metres away. For a caterpillar, choosing a pupating site too near the water is dangerous. After entering her chrysalis phase, a female Cairns birdwing emerges into the light. It's one of the most extraordinary sights in the insect world. The leftover cells she didn't need to form her new body remain behind in a liquid called meconium. pumps fluid from her abdomen 
into the veins of her delicate new wings. It takes a few hours for them to harden and dry. Then, she's ready for flight. Her hind wings act as rudders as she makes sharp turns to avoid any predators. The butterfly has just six weeks to live. She must mate as soon as possible and pass on her genes to the next generation. The spectacular emerald-hued males patrol the area, looking for newly emerged females. A male has spotted her. Now is the moment to get down to business. The male is smaller than her. Should they be disturbed during this vital act, she'll use her larger wingspan to fly off and take the male with her. They mate for up to 14 hours. He'll fertilize each one of her eggs. It's thought that he may remain with her after mating to prevent any other male from gaining access. Their lifespan is so short. But by mating, they allow the circle of life to continue. Soon, the next generation of shapeshifters will begin their transformation. And just like when their parents were caterpillars, they'll use camouflage, poison and mimicry in their battles to defend themselves. Mastering the art of disguise is a matter of survival. These leaf insects are found throughout Australia and Asia. Nicknamed walking leaves, they're the size, shape and colour of the surrounding foliage. Their strange gyrations are also a sort of camouflage. Shaky wobbles mimic the way leaves sway in the breeze. It's a good disguise. Useful in deflecting the attention of predators like the grey goshawk, which lives in the same forest.
Other insects use a different kind of mimicry. For many bugs, wandering into the path of these voracious weaver ants means certain death. Aggressive and territorial. Weaver ants would rather die than relinquish their territory. They work together to overpower, then dismember their prey. They spread out like a giant net, letting nothing escape. An established colony of weaver ants can hunt down millions of victims each year. This spider doesn't stand a chance. However, this species of jumping spider is an expert at disguise. It's tricked the ants into thinking it's one of them. The ants rely less on vision and more on chemical signals to tell them what is friend and what is foe. By adopting their chemical signature, the spider is able to remain undetected. The spider's chemical mimicry isn't just a clever defense mechanism, but also an aggressive predatory ploy. Because the ants think the spider is one of them, they won't stop it entering their nest, where it will prey on their eggs, larvae and pupae. To be able to penetrate the defences of the weaver ant nest is remarkable. It's one of the most formidable fortresses in the forest. And it's built by a mighty army of these highly resourceful ants. Found in Africa and Asia as well as Australia, a colony of weaver ants can be half a million strong. Alone, a single weaver ant is tiny, vulnerable. But together, they become a mighty, many-celled workforce. This is the definition of teamwork. They're getting ready to construct a new base camp. The ants grip with their legs and jaws and collectively pull the leaves together. Thank you.
This is when the weaver ants really live up to their name. They carry ant larvae to the edge of the leaves, where the larvae produce fine gossamers of silk from their silk glands. The workers then manoeuvre the larvae back and forth. They position the larvae's heads next to the leaves. As the larvae produce the silk, it adheres to the leaf surfaces. It's a living loom. The result is a perfectly camouflaged new field garrison from which the ants send out their territory patrols and hunting parties. Teamwork isn't just for hunting and building. These ants are transporting one of their huge, pupating queens. Their nest has been disturbed and they're moving her to a safe house while they make repairs. When she's fully grown, she'll develop wings. Her job will be to fly to a new area and found a fresh colony. She's around four times their size. But together, they make light work. The weaver ant isn't the only hunter in the canopy. Spread between the trees, a giant sprawling web holds the remains of insects large and small. It's been created by tent spiders. They're common in tropical Asia and Australia. Each spider, the width of a man's hand, has created a dense web around half a metre across. Like the weaver ants, they too benefit from their joint labours. Unusually for arachnids, tent spiders live in colonies. They set up their webs close to each other. So even though a single web is relatively small, together the webs can cover entire sections of canopy. And the neighbourly spiders maximise their catch. Hatching insects usually fly straight upwards as they emerge. Anything passing close enough can get caught up in the communal web, even small birds. Vibrations run through the web, triggering the closest spider to move in and inject its venom into the victim. Incapacitated, the prey becomes easier to wrap up in the spider's silk. In no time at all, it's totally helpless. Anything the spider can't eat now will keep nicely until later. These webs will stay in place until strong winds or heavy rain destroy them. The tent spiders then simply rebuild 
together. Down on the forest floor, this cricket is about to enter the lair of one of Australia's most terrifying predators. The Eastern Tarantula. She's one of the biggest spiders in the country up to 16 centimetres across. Her venom is powerful enough to kill a dog. This spider lives on the ground in the drier areas of the forest. She's excavated a burrow around a metre deep. Alone, she waits just inside the burrow entrance. The tarantula is an ambush predator. This spider relies more on touch than sight. As she patiently waits, the cricket passes near her burrow. Its movements are producing telltale vibrations. It's all over in seconds. With the tarantula around, the forest floor is never a safe place for potential prey like crickets. But the trees aren't safe either. The huntsman spider doesn't build a web to trap prey. It hunts its victims down. It's well camouflaged to blend into the tree has amazing speed. The cricket is history. No animal is free from danger in the forest. From the biggest to the smallest. This St Andrew's Cross spider is spinning her web. She's only found in Australia and lives in the margins of the rainforest.
With long legs but a small body, she waits for prey upside down on her web. Her legs are arranged in pairs, resembling a diagonal cross. She makes a catch. Before the fly has a chance to escape, she wraps it up into an immobilised, neat package. These food parcels can be left for later, but not today. She regurgitates her stomach fluids, full of enzymes, onto the prey. This, combined with the chewing action of her fangs and jaws, reduces the prey to a biological soup. She sucks it up through her tube-like mouth parts. A male cross spider, much smaller, approaches her for mating. She's not interested. A second male tries his luck. This one's got her attention. not quite as he intended. This species of spider practices sexual cannibalism. Only the fittest males can court, mate, and then evade the female. This pursuer becomes dinner. But someone else has been eagerly following this drama. In the jungle, there's always another creature capable of turning a predator into prey. The Porsche spider. It's smaller than the St Andrew's cross, but size isn't everything. Porsche is an astonishing arachnid. It has very large anterior eyes. They're unique. No other spider is known to see as well as the Porsche. And that's not all. Researchers are discovering that this species has a comparatively larger brain than any other spider. It can alter its predatory strategy, employing trial and error testing. It will purposefully take indirect routes to its prey. These behaviours suggest problem-solving intelligence. It's possible the Porsche can plan. It begins to make its move. Sensing the proximity of a predator, the St Andrew's Cross tries to discourage an attack. It's called trampolining. She's trying to make herself a difficult target. But the Porsche spider, as well as having extraordinary eyesight and high intelligence, has an extra weapon. 
a lightning-fast, super-accurate jump. Fangs inject powerful venom. Soon, the St Andrew's Cross will be completely immobile. Ready for dispatch. Australia's bugs and butterflies have adopted some extraordinary survival strategies. From ants that use larvae as glue guns, to spiders that disguise themselves as ants. The forests of Australia are packed with an astonishing variety of creepy crawlies. Aerial show-offs, masters of disguise, and extravagant dresses. There's nothing they won't do in the great battle for life. <laughs> 